You're listening to the sounds of the almost mythical Yamaha UD Stomp. It has eight discrete delay lines that can be combined in series or in parallel. And frankly, you can create some pretty dang amazing sounds with it. What I'd like to do today is show you how you can create similar sounds using Logic Pro and only Logic Pro stock plugins. Let's check it out. Okay, I've got the Yamaha UD Stomp patch list document up on the screen. You can download this document if you're interested from the Yamaha site, and I've included a link to it in the video description below. We're going to be examining the very first preset, 011 Chorus 1 by Alan Holdsworth. You'll see that each preset has a separate row listed for each of the eight delay lines. It's not too hard to kind of get a feel for what's going on. Let's just look at some of the columns here and just, just kind of think about it. Delay time, that's pretty easy. Uh, simply the setting for each of the delay lines. The time is in milliseconds, so 23.6 milliseconds. The uh, UD Stomp does have a uh, low cut filter and a high cut filter. Uh, and they'll either be on or off in the patch list. There's feedback, and that's simply the number of repeats. The numbers go from 0 to 10. The UD Stomp does have a uh, tap capability. This will typically be set to 100 for the presets. Speed and depth is for modulation. It is uh, important to note that the UD Stomp does uh, have the capability to modulate each of the delays. Each delay is also panable, so you'll see left or right, and the number will be from uh, center, I guess zero or center, to ten. Uh, th there's also a level column for the level of the effect. And then there's an overall effect level and direct level and even a direct pan. So lots of parameters that we'll want to look at as we try to imitate these settings in Logic Pro. So let's hop over to Logic Pro and dig right in in terms of building out the patch. All right, I've got Logic Pro pulled up and I've got some audio that I recorded, just um, pretty much the same guitar part that you heard at the beginning of the video. I also have my UD Stomp patch that I pre-created, pulled up and ready to go. So let's kind of walk through it. The first thing you'll notice is that this patch is created using uh, Logic Pro's track stack capability. Within the track stack, I've got several different tracks. So let's look at the first one called Amp. This is just going to provide some amp modeling capabilities on um, into the audio. So let's listen to the dry signal that I recorded. <laughs> Okay, nothing too special. This, this guitar was recorded direct into the audio card. No effects, no amp, no nothing. Let's start adding some plugins to this channel or to this track. First up is the pedal board plugin. And all I'm, all I'm adding in is a squash compressor just to squeeze the signal a little bit. Next up, I've got some amp modeling going on and I'm using the large blackface amp model feeding into a British 1x12 cabinet, feeding into a condenser 414 mic. Next up is some channel EQ, and I'm just rolling off a little bit of low end. Finally on the channel, I'm adding some overall compression using the Logic Compressor plugin. So let's listen to my guitar signal with these effects added into the amp uh, channel. All right, that's much better, and that's actually pretty close to the tone of the guitar at the beginning of the video. Next, what I want to do is look at the actual delays that I've set up. Logic does not ship with an eight-tap delay that modulates. So we've got to be a little creative to replicate that same dynamic. What I've done in this track stack is create three auxiliary tracks, so three buses, if you will and I've added them to the track stack. And on each bus, I've added the same effects to create what I'm calling delay pairs. So instead of eight discrete delays, I have eight delays going, but they're in pairs. So let's look at delay pair one and uh, see how that is set up. Again, the first thing I've got going is a little bit of EQ to roll off some low end. 
just to you know keep it from being too rumbly. The next thing I'm doing on each of the tracks is to add a chorus, to add uh, essentially some stereo chorusing. You can see here for this particular patch, I've got a fairly low intensity. The uh, rate of the chorus is pretty slow, and the mix is set to 100%. And you'll find that across the board. The next delay up in the line is a stereo delay. And this is the Logic, again, stock stereo delay. Now let's take a look at this, and I'm going to flip back to that patch list in just a moment. You'll see that I've turned off beat sync because I want to set these uh, delays up to be very much like the UD Stomps patch uh, that's in the patch list document. So the left delay is set up to 20 milliseconds, right delay is 30 milliseconds. Um, there is no feedback on either right or left sides and there is no low cut or high cut. Now let's flip back over to the patch list real quick and look at the first two delay lines. Oop. There we go. So the first delay line is 23.6 milliseconds. The second one is 30, so pretty close there. I don't have modulation on, these, uh, on the Logic stereo delays, but I do have that stereo chorus. So I've got a little bit of chorusing going. I've also got the uh, stereo delays panned uh, hard right and left. Again, let's take a look at that in Logic. Okay, so there's no crossfeed, which is essentially panning away from right and left. Left and right output is 100%, no feedback. So really, these, this, these operate as two discrete delays. Okay, I'm going to leave this up. Got a little bit of compressor going on, again, just to smooth out the signal. That is delay pair number one. So delay pair two, three, and four are pretty much all the same with the exception of the stereo delay settings. So let me go ahead and pull them up and set them up here so you can see them all together. All right, so delay number two, if you take a look at that, We've got delay 2 set up at 340 and 450 milliseconds. We've got delay pair 3 set up 300 and 400. Delay pair 4 also set up at 2, 300 and 400. And these are very close to the values in the Yamaha UD Stomp patch list. Oops, let me go back here so you can see that. So let's take a glance at this pair right here, five and six. So you can see that's 300 and 400 milliseconds right here. So very close. So what I've done is essentially try to mimic those delay settings using these four stereo delays, which gives me, interestingly enough, eight delays. The next thing is to set up uh, feeding some of that signal from the guitar amp channel into each one of these buses. And so what I'm doing here on the amp channel is simply using Logic's bus, Logic's bus send capability to send to each bus. And I've got the send set essentially to zero dB on each of these buses. So we're sending the signal to all four delays at once. And then I'm just adjusting the volume a little bit within the mixer. So let's check this out and listen to what it sounds like. Okay, it's not a UD stomp, but that tone is very, very close to the tone of the actual UD Stomp Chorus 1 or 011 patch. It's pretty cool, and it was done all with stock Logic delays. One of the nice things about using Logic is you can also take advantage of some of the other Logic plugins to extend the sound. So let's add a delay designer onto the UD Stomp on top, and let's add, this is actually an aftermarket reverb called the Audio Damage EOS. 
which I really like a lot. So let me go ahead and add those in, and it's pretty cool. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I know it's a little bit over the top. Let me leave the delay designer off for a moment. Okay, that's a little bit better with just the reverb, but you get the picture. You can get very creative and kind of work with this and really extend it to your heart's content. Anyhow, there you have it, a fairly easy way to get a Yamaha UD Stomp type of sound in a Logic preset that is only using Logic plugins and settings. Hope you can uh, get some use out of this, extend it, get some great sounds, and as always, I'll see all of you on the next video. Mm -hmm.